Hello guys, welcome to the Train Parrot. On the four hour, we have managed to reach almost by $300, the final aggressive target that we were talking on Friday. But the story doesn't end there. We have confirmed last night on candle close a daily breakout. I wanna talk about the W pattern formation that we have in here. I wanna talk about the targets and if it failed to break out the W formation, we're also going to talk about the best levels that we need to defend. Where am I actually buying more to add into my stack for that we are going to use as usual liquidity we look into the delta order books where are the most significant orders being placed at the moment the support and resistance from the order books fair value gaps that are starting to look quite scary and of course we are in a weekend price action so we will cover the CME strategy as well and yes guys finally yesterday I published my first video as part of our collaboration with the coin bureau trading channel I suggest that you go and subscribe because at least once a week I'm going to be publishing a video over there this was the first video I published and it did really well it got lots of your comments thanks so much i would really appreciate if you go to that video you give it a like and you leave a comment that's really gonna make a case to continue these collaborations so i truly appreciate if you can help me on this one yesterday as well i made an appearance in paul baron network we talk about bitcoin ethereum avalanche xrp we put at battle sui versus solana from the point of view of technicals and we close down with uniswap make sure that you don't miss the video if you are interested in my views on all coins let's get into the content if you didn't miss my update on friday 9 am which i've been religiously published Publishing on telegram twitter and instagram all the links are in the description i call out for this breakout that happened at 2 a.m on friday we discussed that the low hanging fruit for the four hour to hit was to go to the median calculated with statistics that's an rsi of 54 on the four hour time frame followed by a more aggressive target of 66 rsi those were located roughly at 62k and 64k we didn't have any trouble hitting the 62k as you can see from the moment of the breakout it made a three percent only with green candles what i wasn't expecting that much was that right after that we were gonna go straight with no pauses and get very close to the final aggressive target we were just 300 away from it the actual target was 63.776 and we made it to 63.412 at the moment the price is building a console consolidation bullish flag in here so I don't discard that we might make it but we are on a weekend volume is going to definitely get impacted by that we can already see that after these two candles the volume went massively lower than during the pump and I will expect that most of the people in that trade already took profits. We can also see that the funding rates during the pump went into the negative, which definitely was key to help this setup to go higher. But right now we are at very high levels of funding fees. We can still move higher, but the opportunity is no longer that evident as the one we talked about on Friday. On the daily time frame, as you can see, we have pretty much completed the W formation in here the neck is located roughly at 63k a little bit below definitely not perfect we have a quite lower right hand side in here there are no bullish divergences in this case but what we do have in our favor is a confirmed breakout this time on the daily what we saw here on the four hour that happened on Friday, we are kind of mimicking a similar setup on the daily. But this time, even though the quality on a daily signal, I definitely respect it more than on a four hour. If you pay attention, we have two touches and then break out in a bounce of support. But in here we have one, two, three touches and then a double bottom formation and then the breakout. So in my opinion, the four hour had slightly more chances to hit in that median compared to now Bitcoin having to go all the way to the top of the range. Notice that the daily is already above the median as well. So I wouldn't be surprised that over the weekend, maybe we come back and retest the level of 43 on the RSI. What I would like to see stay 
very promising is to respect that 43.44 on the daily RSI. 43 at the moment is slightly below 60K. Notice as well that if we were during this weekend to break out on this W pattern formation, there is a chance that that can happen. That could take us roughly into 67.2. If we manage to do that, make sure you have enough fireworks because that will mean that our low was just this on the daily and the structure is not broken, contrary to what I say yesterday, because we could start considering this move just like a single move and potentially look at this just in this way and maybe claim that the bullish structure is still unbroken. If we were to fail on this W pattern breakout and we broke that level slightly below 60K, we will be breaking the full structure of the daily that we have been protecting since early August. And in that case, we need to go back to the levels that we talk about during the week. If you haven't been able to watch the videos, I'll give you a refresher. We have 57k as a key level adding to my bag. I already hold sub 60s, but I say that buying a 57, once again, I will consider that something great. After my buy at 57, if we go to the 51s, that you can definitely see that relative to 57 is a lot more loaded in liquidity. The more loaded a level is in the liquidity, the high chance that can turn into a reversal point. So finding confluence between support and resistance and targets for RSI using reverse RSI, Fibonacci levels, and at the same time pairing that with heavy loaded levels of liquidity is definitely a win and it's a lot different than just the typical average trader that is just buying a falling knife without being able to see any data, definitely putting the odds in random mode and hoping for the best. And if we zoom out enough, we get the third level. That third level is the 46 to 48. I'm going to pick something between 47k for that last golden entry if you zoom out enough, you're going to see that there is nothing as big as that level, not even here in the upside. Things that are not really in our favor for this W pattern formation to break out and take the liquidity immediately above 64.4, paving the way towards 67, is that this move in here was driven by a short squeeze and a lot of open interest in the market, not as much as spot buys. And that makes this move a high risk move. It left behind massive fair value gaps and it's going to be pretty difficult for the price to just continue over a weekend pumping like crazy in here without doing anything about these fair value gaps. The key is that we come in here, we take some of them and we quickly reverse back to the upside. Luckily for us, we are on a weekend and CME close at 63.2. That was on Friday at the moment that CME goes offline. And you know what I say, if we were to go lower to take that liquidity from fair value gaps, there's a high chance during the working days in the next week, we come back and close the gap that we form whichever price action occurs over the weekend. The problem, which has been pretty much the pattern over the past weekends, is that the price over the weekend remains just sideways. And as soon as CME market opens, then it starts dumping or then it starts pumping. And in that case, we cannot use this strategy. As a refresher, we have a CME gap here at the top between 65 and 66 that is attracting the price. And we have this black ship down here from 54 to 54.5. Both of them are in play. In my opinion, it will be a great thing just to wipe this one with a sharp and fast week to the downside with a quick recovery that will be the best outcome that we can have at this point in the market. Leaving the gap open, it's like to quit smoking but still keep your cigarettes in your pocket. And we have left some big gaps in the past, like the one that is at 20k, which most people have decided to fully forget that we never closed. But who knows, maybe one day. We have some news here on the open interest. We are back in the top third. This green candle 
that happened yesterday is responsible for taking us back to the top third. The top third represents two things for us. It represents the highest area of risk in this full range of trading. Every time we have come to here, that is the time to dump. But the problem is that we cannot assume that forever, every time we go there, we're going to see a rejection that takes us back down. Eventually, things might end up playing different. Not to go very far, end of September, we were here and we made it to the second third without going to the first third, which is pretty much what we have done every time in here. So I consider this open interest in here very interesting, worth having a look. You can see that it mimics pretty much what the price is doing, which is some sort of W formation. But the difference is that this one in the open interest has already broken out and is coming for a retest right there at that line. Let me zoom in a little bit more. So what that open interest is saying is that the people appetite for risk is increasing and somehow there is this belief from those investors in futures with leverage that we might break out from the top end of the range. Withdrawals from big wells are increasing massively and we are about to cross the zero 05, we are at zero 053. That means that withdrawals are more than doubling the deposits on exchanges from big wells. And yes, long-term holders are at the moment slowly selling, but I wouldn't say that they have sold more than 20 to 15% of what they accumulated up until July. Most of the patterns that I'm looking on the weekly time frame and daily time frame are starting to look very promising, contrarian to my views on liquidity, dollar and gold, which are all telling us that we are not ready for an impulsive move equivalent to what we have in 2020 to 2021. We have this arm wrestling at the moment between technicals calling out for a potential breakout here, but the actual liquidity necessary to do that is taking too long to land in Bitcoin's plate. And without that, it makes me doubt that this is possible and the only way that this could end up still playing out in a positive way with an actual breakout in here if all stars align from the point of view of liquidity just in time for the breakout or maybe slightly later in such a way that we could look at the price action back in time later on and think Bitcoin might have been front running that liquidity that was already on the way to us. Let me explain so you understand what I'm talking about here. We have three white soldiers calling out for a massive impulsive move. We have only have three white soldiers back in time in January 2023. After that, that was the beginning of the bull market. So taking these three green candles not seriously, I think is a mistake from the point of view of technicals. We are right now on a weekly candle about to close once again for the third time above the bull market support band. If you notice the previous failed attempts, we were just one candle above and then we went straight below or in here two candles and on the third we came back below. This is definitely going to matter a lot when it comes to validating the effect of the three white soldiers or completely destroying the bull case. We do have the recipe because we are currently bouncing from the golden pocket on the Fibonacci levels. We are bouncing off the bull market support band. We may be about to produce a bullish cross on the daily time frame and you can see that the histogram on MACD is on a way down on the bearish side. I also have good news when it comes to the hash ribbons miners capitulation signal that right now we are printing a green bubble. What does it mean? It means that the MAs are in the process of producing a bull cross. Right after a bull cross, if that remains on the bullish side, then eventually you see shortly after a buy signal. I wasn't expecting to get this so quickly. It's still not confirmed. And you can see like in here where it failed because it produced a bullish cross and immediately in the candle after another capitulation. This was one of the longest hash ribbon events that took 70 days. Typically it doesn't take that long, but this is one of the shortest ones as well, taking roughly four days if confirmed. And I remind you that the expectation at this time in the market, it is to get a capitulation event. Part of that expectation as well is for the price to push higher during the red zone in here and closer 
similar to the actual buy signal to see some sort of capitulation of 15 to 20 percent that is just past performance and when i talk about that 15 to 20 percent is in the context of bitcoin during those years 2020 and 2016 having already done a pump of 50 percent in here we have done barely a 6.8 so i will consider that a 15 to 20 percent drawdown for that final capitulation of hash ribbons to be a little bit too much for the particular volatility that we are having on these days in the Bitcoin network. On the weekly, things continue to look bullish. We have the breakout on the 16th of September. We were looking for a low in here and now the RSI is going sideways. If over the weekend that W pattern on the daily was to break out to the upside, hopefully we can see the stochastic bearish cross reversing and opening up the mouth once again, faking out lots of investors. We are back into the neutral area in the fear and greed index. The week was flipping between fear and neutral pretty much every day before we were having a look at trading different website on the four hour using the swing template that gives us the big picture now i switch it back into scalping mode in the five minute time frame we're gonna be hunting for where is the liquidity in the close proximity the one that has been formed with the very recent price action we're hunting for stop losses and levels of liquidations of account that could give us a hint on what is the most immediate next move for the Bitcoin price action. You can see that we have in here the bullish flag that we were talking about in the four hour time frame. You can tell that at the beginning of this impulsive move, people left their stop losses in here, roughly from 58.8 to 58.7. Liquid cools down very quickly as we go into 57. Don't get confused, that 57 definitely has more liquidity when we are looking at the swing template on trading different by the way trading different there is a 15 discount in the description this is my favorite website to see live information about liquidation pools and it's the first website that introduced this on the upper end we can see that we went into 63 those levels were created with recent stop losses from people that probably enter roughly around 61k wanting to short bitcoin they got it wrong and they got liquidated very quickly at 63k going further up we have liquidity at 64.7 that would be a move of roughly two thousand dollars up if we went two thousand dollars down there is not much so if price wanted to really punish longs it needs to move almost 4k down reversing the whole move up and even on the scalping template we can see that 67 definitely wins the battle even for the short term in terms of stop losses accumulated there so this is bullish let's look at other factors i want to pay a look at the delta just in a bit it can get really confusing as well when we start getting opposite readings from different indicators if you ask me in my own experience trading different liquidation pools tend to attract a lot more the price in the shorter term compared to fair value gaps I do respect 100% fair value gaps. And at this point in time, we have all these levels in here and we have the liquidity 64 from liquidation pools and we are on a weekend. Based on the bull flag and on the liquidity top end, we might go and take that liquidity 64.7. But if over the weekend, things turn a little bit bearish and we broke below the 62 support that we have protected for such a long period in here, that will pretty much guarantee that we could be taking over the weekend a pretty big chunk of all these fair value gaps if we did that over the weekend that will be phenomenal in my actual preference because that will build a big cme gap to the downside acting as an insurance for price to come back later during the week and close that gap let's have a look at the order book in material indicators there's also a discount in the description if you want to have a look at the actual data on different coins not just on bitcoin and we continue to have larger selling pressure ask liquidity at the top end relative to what we have as support after this 85 million in bid that we have end of september nothing comes even close our current support is 
is just 27 million, 28 million, and 16 million. Those are the three levels below the price. And above the price, we have 36, 28, and 45. That reaches 65K. Above that, it gets a bit more thin, and it comes back with 51 million at 70K. There's no clear direction at the moment on what the whales are doing when it comes to this order book. Purple whales seem to be going just sideways. Brown whales continue to put new lows. Pretty much everybody is selling at this point. Looking at these orders using trading light, we can see that 58 to 57 is the most concentrated level of orders at the moment. There is some mild liquidity, actually pretty thin at 62K at the moment. That is the support that we were talking about that hopefully we don't break, otherwise we guarantee to take the fair value gaps. And at the top end, there is not much resistance. In fact, the resistance at 65 has been removed and 64 resistance has weakened a lot from 300 to just 247. The delta at the moment puts slightly the longs in risk. This has changed from the 8th of October where the shorts were the one being at risk. And you can see here, as soon as we went sub 60s, that peaked with a liquidity of 400K delta of shorts being liquidated. And as the price went up, you can see how that is all taken. And then retail flips into taking low Longs, and now 60k are exposed from the cumulative delta. When it comes to liquidity, nothing has changed much more. Past week, we talked about faking back into the previous range on the RSI applied to the global liquidity index. The global liquidity index is holding up there, the breakout, as if it was still doing a retest. People were talking about China injecting stimulus packages of almost 300 billion into the system. So far, I'm not seeing that much relative to the big amount of liquidity that China was injecting from August in 2023 up until March. That was responsible for this 200% move on Bitcoin, but I don't see it yet in the chart. The Fed is in the process of producing a high in terms of liabilities. That means that they might be buying some bonds, but we still cannot break out from this resistance in the previous bull market in COVID. Once they broke out in here, entering finally quantitative easing, that was the time when Bitcoin started rallying. That is something that we are still missing together with the liquidity and the fact that gold doesn't seem yet to be putting that top that we were talking during this week. We saw for a lapse of a moment the RSI weekly on gold being below the support and I was almost counting victory that we were able to find the potential top of gold which is one of the most important four legs needed for Bitcoin to produce a strong move up like it did in August 2020. But we ended up closing the week with a green candle and going back to the tops of the RSI range. So I guess we're going to have to arm ourselves with a bit more patience when it comes to gold topping. And the fourth leg is DXY that seems to be pretty sticky here, holding back inside the range after this breakout on the weekly. As a summary, DXY still doesn't give us the go neither gold liquidity injections are in progress china is injecting liquidity but nothing as substantial to even hold the breakout of liquidity that we saw in the past month and probably the most concerning one is that the fed no matter what changes are being applied in monetary policies cutting rates and still in quantitative tightening, and seeing still TA saying we're almost ready for that makes me believe that the only option that Bitcoin has now to break out from here is the fact that we are in October, so seasonality, elections, and traders attempting maybe to front run those aspects that are key and critical for Bitcoin to move up. Japan just had the largest outflow in history, 8.8 billion exit from Japanese stocks. That is pretty worrying for the economy. And Martin is saying, be aware this pump is driven by leverage. The previous drop from 64 to 59 was 
started by an overdose of leverage. Now over 1.5 billion in leverage is fueling the rally again, making it highly risky. As I explained earlier, we are entering the top third, the one that has been responsible for each and every single dump from the top to the bottom. The only reason I'm paying attention in here is because there are also some signs coming from TA supporting the fact that we are preparing for another attempt as well. And I will say there are some slim chances that we can actually break out from the top. And yesterday the market on the S&P closed on a new all time high at 5.8K, 23% up. And I think this is responsible to have given a hand to Bitcoin when it was sub 60s and bring it back up. And guys, if you open the description down below, you're going to find my favorite products in crypto with the best discounts and bonuses. We have a new partner called Bluffing. This is an exchange that I'm currently starting to use more often. You can get up to 5,000 as a bonus and 50% discounts fees if you sign up with my link in the description. That's definitely going to help the channel as well. Have a look at the rest of them. The ones that people are enjoying the most at the moment are trading different with the discount of 15%. Hybrid Capital offers amazing value and you can even copy my charts that I left at the top of the description. I'll see you on the next one. Bye bye.